for any brand being hot on, uh, you know, uh, on diversity, on inclusion, on representation, on reaching everyone in society equally is a hot topic right now. Are we still going to be doing it when it's not a hot topic? Hello and welcome to a new episode of Engati CX. I'm your host, Neha, and we're really glad to have you join us today. On the show, we talk to CX and technology experts from around the world. We explore, uncover, and share fresh insights on creating experiences that your customers will remember and look forward to. Engati is the world's leading multilingual, no-code digital CX platform available across 14 channels with 45,000 solutions created across 186 countries in every domain and use case. Engati has also been recognized as a top platform by Inc. Magazine, Tech World, CIO Magazine, and many others. It has won the Cody Award for Best AI-Driven Technology Solution in the year 2021. We've run the Engati blog, video channel, and the Engati CX podcast, receiving upwards of 400,000 visitors annually. And now for our guest. Chris Kenner is CEO and founder of Brand Advance, which has launched the industry's first diversity-driven global media ecosystem across on- and offline media for agencies and in-house brand teams. BA partners 250-plus global platforms across diversity media, BAME, LGBTQ+, female empowerment, tech, disabilities, lifestyle, queer fashion, and many other specialists and hard-to-reach demographics. An advocate for diversity and inclusion, Chris is a board member at ITV, the Victoria and Albert Museum, and previously on the board of Pride AM, now known as Outvertising. Welcome to the show, Chris. Thank you for having me. So before we dive into our interview, don't forget to subscribe to Ngati and tap the bell icon to get access to exclusive content from thought leaders around the globe. I guess, Chris, let's get this conversation started. Uh, I think it's always interesting and important to know the journey that people have had to sort of get to where they are and the decisions that led them to sort of uh, take up uh, this extremely important role that you're doing in kind of promoting diversity. So I'm curious, would you be okay in sharing sort of, uh, you know, what led you here and why you're doing what you're doing? So, um, okay, I'll try and give you 38 years in 38 seconds. So... Um, I was born on the Isle of Man, which is a little rock in, uh, between Ireland and mainland UK. Um, I was the first black kid ever born there. Uh, and it's only a, a country, it's like uh, it's a rock of 70,000 people or something. But, um, and I say the first black kid just because you get, um, there's one hospital and I had a certificate that said first ethnic child born in this hospital. So if there's only one hospital, I'm guessing I was the first kid. But anyway, the... Um, Moved into, so I was sort of, I suppose, a turmoil childhood in some ways, um, where I was in and out of care um, and spent some time in a children's home, etc. as well. Um, and then joined the army when I was 16, 16 and nine months, nearly 17. Uh, and I was in the British Army, went to Iraq twice, went to Afghan, went to lots of other places, went to Germany, met my now ex wife. Uh, Victoria, I had two kids, Kyra and Jerome. Uh, Jerome being mixed race son and Kyra being white, uh, blonde, blue eyes. And I say that not, not to just tell you the color of the skin of my kids, but because you're saying sort of the things that have led to me doing what I'm doing now and that they are it. You know, I have a black son and a white daughter, basically. Um, and advertising speaks to my white daughter and shows my white daughter and has no blocking brand safety that stops you getting to my white daughter. Yet my uh, mixed ethnicity son, my mixed race son, everything's blocked. If he's lucky, if he sees himself in an ad, and if he does, it's normally tokenistic or, you know, or, or, or is sometimes portrayed in a bad light. And actually, brands all over the world are using brand safety as a reason for keyword block lists of words that describe, well, describe my son, but they describe me and you as well. You know, they, they, they describe every word for every, for every race, religion, and sexual orientation that's not white, straight, male, and Christian, <laughs> literally. You know, so, um, so yeah, that's what led to it all, really. That I mean, there's... I've missed out lots and there's lots of things in my life that have put the fire in my belly to go and make a change. But I think, you know, I'm very lucky now. Uh, I'm in a position of being a CEO of Brand Advance Group, 
you know, there's four companies in the, in the group, 127 employees in six countries. Uh, and I started it three years ago. Uh, with, and it's, we're fortunate that the whole world caught up with, you know, we've always known Black Lives Matter. We've always known every life matters. But we need to stand up and be heard about, you know, the, the communities that are, are less shown in media, in advertising, that are derogatory, that have fake news said about them, etc. We've always known that. We've always been fighting it because we've been fighting for our existence amongst the world that, you know, fav favours people that don't have any colour to their skin. Oh, no, absolutely. And you touched upon a lot of different points that I think is really going to drive this conversation, like representation is so important. I had the privilege to sort of study in New York, um, and it was sort of interesting to be there at a time during the Black Lives Matter protest, uh, during sort of a lot of turmoil in this country. Uh, speaking to your point about how media, you know, speaks more to your daughter's sort of demographic that she kind of represents, do you think where media is today, we've progressed to a certain extent? Uh, what is your honest take on that, the hot take that you have, and uh, where do you sort of see the future of that being? So the simple answer is, have we moved in a better direction? Yes, but they're very small steps. And, you know, we need to find out whether it was tokenism, because being hot for any brand, being hot on, uh, you know, uh, on diversity, on inclusion, on representation on reaching everyone in society equally is a hot topic right now are we still going to be doing it when it's not a hot topic when it's not a cool thing to do when everybody's not talking about it and patting themselves on the back for for you know for increasing the percentage of non-white people in their workforce by one percent and say well done to us you know whereas you look out the window and 27 percent of what walks past you is non-white so i don't know, understand why your extra 1% is, you know, something to, 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 to clap about just yet. I think the future, the second party question of where we're going to be in the future, uh, we have to be better. Yeah. I, I can't predict the future. And so I don't know, but I know what I'm going to do. And I am going to scream and shout and do a million podcasts and stand on a billion stages. And, you know, because my kids deserve us to fight this. Uh, my kids deserve every brand to somewhere in the cycle of a one-year advertising show people like them, show communities that they come from, make them feel like valid consumers. We have to, and we are nowhere near there yet. You know, the, the racism after the football of, for England, uh, for the England players that missed their penalty is disgusted and shows that society is not there. You know, we, uh, I'm speaking from London and we have different problems to New York where you were, you know, we don't have police kneel on our neck. That doesn't happen. They don't murder us in the street. Not, not really, not up to that extent. But we do have systemic racism. Like it is just built into the very fabric of the country that we've built our slaves. You know, like we're, we've been denying it for so long. Now everybody is getting involved in it. Business and media and advertising. We all have our part to play, you know? No longer can we be allies anymore. We have to be advocates now. An ally just says, you know, I like black people, but I'm not gonna get involved if something's going wrong, but you know I like you. You know, an advocate says, oh, stop, you know, having terms in my business like blacklist and whitelist, the blacklist's bad and the whitelist's good. And if I do something wrong and I don't pay my bill, I get a black mark against my name. Changing stuff like that is what advocacy does and says, actually, is that subliminally telling people that black's bad, white's good uh, and, and everything right. between, you know? So yeah, I think um, we all need to be advocates. Everybody does. And that's where I'm hoping brands get to as well. You know, some are, and we praise them like Ben and Jerry's and brands like that, that really, you know, have got involved since day one and said, this is who we are and this is what we'll fight for. But some have had the privilege of growth without the responsibility of, you know, what, who do they stand for and what do they stand for? And it's not about taking sides, it's just about what's right. The good thing about doing diversity is it actually just sits nice on the heart. It's actually just morally correct. It was very inspiring 
and we owe it to kind of future generations to, to sort of build the foundations of today so that tomorrow is better. A question that sort of came up in my mind when you were talking about uh, companies doing things, you know, because they want to versus we are diverse, uh, quote unquote. Yeah, yeah. Is it progressive for sort of the movement if companies, even if they, you know, they're just sort of pandering to an audience like, okay, we'll, we'll play the diversity card, we'll put up a rainbow for the for pride month or would you prefer it to be sincere and uh you know even though that might be that's a much smaller sort of percentage yeah, yeah. my view and you know you've got me on there and i certainly don't speak on behalf of all ceos or for behalf of all black people or gay people i just speak for chris kenner but you know my view is i don't care why they're there they just stay there i don't care if the reason this year that they're going to um, you know, get involved in Black Lives Matter or get involved in Pride or sponsor a Pride local to their office is because of a corporate or a insincerity. Insincerity? Is that even the word? But you know what I mean? There's, there's some underlying reason that's not just because we should be here. Don't really care about it. And I think we should stop caring about it. The thing we should care about is that they're there again tomorrow and that time next year and that time next year. And then in the end, you'll forget why they joined the party. You'll just know that they're at the party every year, you know? And, and I'm, I'm party is the wrong word as well. They're at the parade. Because we don't party for pride. We don't party for Black Lives Matter. Definitely not. We don't party for any of these because there is still an inequality. You know me as an out black gay guy. There are places I can't go because I'm black and there's places I can't go because I'm gay. They literally, you know, took me off buildings or stole me in the street. It's unfortunate. I know it's horrible, but it's true, you know. So none of us are partying yet because we can't party until all of our brothers, sisters and non-binary across the globe get to enjoy the freedoms that some countries get, you know, that in New York or in, uh, in London, that we can get to enjoy and express ourselves and be who we want to be. Yes, don't get me wrong, we still got problems in society, but... You know, we get a lot more freedoms than many other countries and people are going through some horrendous stuff as we're speaking with the privilege on this podcast. They're going through it right now, you know, threats to their lives and stuff. So, yeah, in answer to your question, I don't care why they join, but let's, you know, let's make them stay by saying thanks for being here. You put a black box on your social and said, I want to stand so shoulder to shoulder with that okay so come and stand shoulder to shoulder with me because bloody hell it's been hard you know it as well you know you're, you're sort of non-white yeah you, yeah you, it's not we've we've got used to it we we notice the little things like moving bags in a lift or a security guard looking at us and not our white friends and you know tiny little things that have happened and i can't speak on behalf of you but i'm sure you've got a hundred of your own little things you know We've put up with it and now we're just done. Like I'm tired now and I'm, I'll be damned if my son is going to have to put up with it. There was no point elevating me to the to CEO and, you know, of a multi-million pound company and letting me go off on nice podcasts if, if I ain't going to change it because he cannot go through life and be as tired as I am by the time he's 38. Like we cannot allow it. It all needs to change. We have to fight the good fight in, in numbers. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. 100%. So talking about, you know, bringing about change, uh, what is it that you practice as CEO of Brand Advance to kind of uh, bring about diversity and inclusion? And what is it that you would uh, sort of advise companies to do if they're looking to include this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think my, my very beginning disclaimer on my answers on that is these are some of the stuff i'll say is some of the stuff that we've done i think the first thing companies need to understand is it is not the responsibility of their black gay muslim yeah. employees to to step up educate and to educate the rest of the company it is not there may be people like me and probably like yourself that want to put our head above the parapet and say yes we will you know, I'm, I'm a voice and I'd like you to hear it, but it isn't the responsibility of his uh, employees. You know, they've gone through the trauma of just being them up to that point. It is the responsibility of everybody else in the company 
to, to, to understand and make the changes for the black employee, not for the black employee to come in and tell you how to make changes to make their life better. You know, so, and I think that's really, that's an important first step is to understand that because I'm, I'm pretty sure, you know, a lot of companies don't quite get that bit yet. It's sort of like, go on then, well, we've allowed you to make an ERG, you know, we've said we'll give you a hundred pounds to get some refreshments so all black people can get together. Yeah, no, 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 no. Stop putting it back on us. So that's the first bit. The second bit is um, having these groups, these, these groups in your, in your company, ERGs or whatever you want to call them. Like, heard a thousand names but just really allowing people to express themselves around other people from communities that are or from demographics that they uh, associate themselves with um, because that gives you the strength of having a voice now that's good for companies and we run events we make sure that there's one step further than that so we have a staff council that then gets to sit with me and after they've had these meetings gets to come back and you know, I'll say all the policies and procedures that I'm thinking of doing um, and they get to say that's good or that's OK or absolutely no. And here's the reason why, you know, or reasons why. And we get to have that dialogue then. Um, and, you know, this is something that Brand Advance has implemented recently because we sort of see the OK, so we've got a very diverse company, like majorly it's like Noah's Ark. You know, which is fantastic. I like, I, I love it. It, it. We do things for clients that many companies couldn't, not because we're any cleverer, but just because of the different thought processes that everyone getting to the conclusion for the client has gone through to get to that answer. It may, that's our superpower, you know? So, so if for no other reason than that, that is why every company should take this journey. Um, inclusion is difficult. Diversity is easy. Once you once you've started, once you've got a, a, di a diverse group and you grow from that diverse group, then it's just six degrees of separation. Like other Indian people know other Indian people, just as other LGBTQ plus people know other LGBTQ. So the six degrees of separation sort of means you can grow from that once you've got the foundation. Um, but the inclusion you're then going to have the superpower is the different thoughts and communities that are going to answer your clients briefs or problems the difficulties you may have is that these communities have inherently because we are tribal species not really been around each other that much because society has helped to segregate us you know because life has because just different journeys so, but your workplace needs to tackle that and to integrate. So we do things like we have a culture day every month where we go, we just shut the office and everybody gets get together. We go and do some activities, half, one half a day, one activity, one half a day, another activity. But then within that, we do things like um, everybody will give a, um, a recipe from their culture, from their, and then we get them all cooked. So we've actually got that next week. Uh, again, or we'll go to a restaurant that's from a certain restaurant so that everybody in the company can try food from that from that restaurant and stuff. And we mix that in with things like um, going to the Victoria and Albert Museum and looking in the vaults where nobody gets to see stuff so we can see stuff about history as well. And, and just, yeah, just understanding each other. Everything we're doing is about trying to get to know each other better and, you know, um, a lot of people told me when we were only 20, 30 people, people were like, you know, it's easy to get to understand. Wait till you get to, to 90 people. Then I got to 90 people and we still continued doing it. And everyone's, wait till you get over 100. Now we're at 130 people, you know, and they're like, wait till you've got offices in different countries. You can't do it then. We've got offices in five countries now and still we can manage it where, you know, we've got, we've made, built a video wall in the office so that when everybody's in the office, the other offices are always in the office because there is a camera on people that work from home or in the other offices that feeds into each office. Something as simple as that. So you're hearing all day the voices, the accents of somebody in another office. So that when it comes to being in a meeting, you know, you've sort of got a bit used to that accent. Because, I mean, you know, everybody's like, oh, there's a lot of accents in, in, in Brad Advance. must be difficult. There's a lot of accents in the UK, but just because you've had Scottish and Irish, you've put a Scottish person in India 
and no one in India will ever understand the word they say. That's like what, 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 you know. And so, if we can get used to accents in our own country, why can we not get used to other accents? So, so that's why we do that. Make sure we can hear our officers around the world because we, we have a lot of staff in India. We've got a couple of staff in Pakistan. We've got staff in um, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, and, and New York. So, we want to make sure that we can integrate even if we're not all in the same place i told you i talk a lot though so you have to put in <laughs> i'm sorry no no i was kind of waiting for you to finish uh because as you know especially the food part i love food and i think when you sit down at somebody else's table you're willing to listen to their stories and it builds empathy and it just makes you a better employee a better employer a better uh, person a better designer and uh, that's also another point i wanted to touch upon is you have a creative background i'm a, actually a designer for engati uh, which is interesting and uh, you know i was thinking about the contrast that we see in let's say advertising and media i think has is a little bit more exposed to wanting to drive change versus if you look at like corporate and tech and they're very sort of enmeshed in their ways so how do you see all of these great policies that you have is it harder to sort of get a, a corporate company a tech company to implement them or is it that you know management just has to wake up and like okay let's implement these things yeah 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 i mean we, our policies and procedures are our policies and procedures. We will happily give any, and I'm often asked by different CEOs, can you, you know, can you just send me some of the stuff that you're doing so I can understand what to do? And that's fine. We don't always have the answers. And sometimes I have the answer for something and I should share it. Um, our, because we are a media, uh, what, well, one of the companies is a media agency, the other one is a creative agency, one's a data and insights, and one's a media consultancy. You know, we don't tell companies how to get their house in order, that's for other people to do. Um, we just say, here's us, these are the guiding principles of the business you're going to work with now. You know, we are representing 750 uh, uh, diversity media publishers from Times of India through to Gay Times through to uh, uh, Blavity in the US and you know just we've got publishers all over the world where we serve the ads so it's our ads that are uh, in their pages kind of thing um, uh, and that's what the network is and we say that this is who we are now who the companies are we do have some sort of policies of how we work with people, i.e. we wouldn't put the advertisements of a anti-LGBT brand in LGBT advertising. Now, that doesn't mean we wouldn't work with that brand. There's one thing I've always said, because you can build a company like Brand Advance and you can be very, um, well, you can be pretty confrontational. You can sort of say, we're going to work with you, but we're not going to work with you because you do this. And if I started doing that, it's a very slippy slope to you basically can't work with anyone because even the good ones are bad sometimes, you know. When, when you do the digging and you're like, yeah, oh, yeah. no, I thought, I thought you were. Yeah, literally, you would have no brands at all. It's sort of that, um, I, I remember when there was a boycott of so, um, so when I was younger, it was sort of a lot of young people said, we're going to not buy these different soap brands. And it, it sort of ended with only Unilever brands were left. And then you don't take long to go through the history of Unilever to know that it came <laughs> from, Ga from a Ghanaian soap company that, you know, and, and where it all comes from. So, um, yeah, I think you can, you can, you can sort of uh, get preachy. And I didn't want to do that. I want to make sure that we're open to help any brand, one with their advertising, because that's what our primary thing, then with anything else that they want help with. And if that is, can we see some of your policies and do you mind if we just change the logo and use them ourselves? Yes, as long as you're going to live by them, take them. That, you know, what better thing for a document than for it to be seen by the more than one person, you know? Um, so, so yeah, I think in answer to your question, we. We're, we're always there to help and we'll never sort of close down for a, 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 a brand to be able to get any help it wants to be better because they all need to be better. We all need to be better. I have so much to learn. I learn more more every day as a CEO. You know, have I been the most fantastic CEO? I suppose in 
getting uh, a company from naught to, you know, from zero to a thousand very fast? Yes, probably to praise and a few awards over there are nice. But um, have I got things right with my employees all the time, even though I live and breathe this? You know, no. And none of us have, and we will make mistakes. We just need to, you know, I always say the thing I'm most proud of is not what we've implemented in Brand Advance, because we can be better, we can do more. But that we will learn fast. We'll make a mistake once, you know, uh, don't make the mistake twice, because then you're becoming, you're, you're, you're sort of stepping into foolish territory. Um, and just, you know, fix it fast. I, I love I love that that's you know your sort of take on things because there's this element of cancel culture that's like right now like you know the moment that you've done any bad you're not allowed to improve and I think we're always constantly improving so I, I love yeah. that you know you have a seat at your table for sort of everybody to to come and learn uh, that's amazing um, you know coming a bit to to the company sentiment uh, it was interesting because it deals with kind of AI and contextual messaging, depending on what that ad is, which, uh, you know, I'd like to tie into what Engati does is a lot of it's built on an AI platform, essentially. So I was curious, how do you, you know, how, how does that work? Uh, how do you avoid like bias uh, when these, uh, where is the data getting pulled from and like, what are the message that you're, you're yeah, yeah. So, so how sentiment works is it is the IBM Watson language AI sat on top of the brand advanced uh, global uh, diversity network. So all mm -hmm. the articles written across all black media globally, all Indian, Pakistani, and Muslim, and all LGBTQ plus and disability and age fifty plus, and it's reading every article ever written on these big publishers' um, uh, URLs. Um, and so we originally used it and built, well, we originally built it so that we could um, not have keyword blocking. Because like I said, you know, at the very beginning, one of the reasons I founded the company was because there was words like black man and hoodie and hood and stuff that was describing the kind of content that my son Jerome would consume. But none of it said blonde haired blue eyed girl or, you know what I mean? Like never did it have any words that would stop her content from being monetized. So. Um, I didn't want to do keyword blocking, so we wanted to block by context. So don't block COVID because it's a bad thing, but block negative sentiment articles around COVID. So anything that said the COVID NHS are heroes would not would be monetized, but anything that said COVID death rates rises, then any brand that didn't want to go next to that negative sentiment wouldn't monetize that content. Um, then we still, what we've seen was after we'd left the AI for a little bit and not that long, we started being able to ask the AI questions and it would see the trends in, uh, you know, if you've got the mil millions of articles on Times of India and you get to read them all, you can see when trends in society start write, writing with, uh, uh, writing certain stuff. And then when we looped that, because Brand Advance serves the display and the video ads and, and stuff into these publishers, when you loop that with the engagement, so the real-time engagement, two articles, one with positive sentiment and one with negative sentiment around the same subject, and you can see the engagement of that article, how many times it's been read, how many times it was reread, how many times... So, you know, when you compare sentiment context with engagement, you can see that in two cities in the same country, if more people in one city are engaging with the concept context around you know, vaccine positive sentiment in London, whereas in Manchester, vaccine, more people are reading in Indian media around negative sentiment or in black media around negative. You can start to get a deeper insight into the things, you know, the what really matters to these different communities. So um, that's what sentiment does now. We then built another platform called Cultural Intelligence so that we can take all of this masses of data and data from brand uplift studies within different demographics for different brands and stuff like that, stick it all into one system and then um, agency planners and buyers around the world for the different big agency groups like WPP and uh, OMG, etc. They can use our platform 
to um, to plan and therefore buy diversity media and to make sure that diversity media is in the ecosystem because well we're in the world so I don't understand why our media is not in the ecosystem of the advertising that reaches the world because the whole point of advertising is to sell your product to as many people as possible you know never did anyone write a rule book that said sell your product to as many people as possible unless they're not straight white middle-aged men you know like so so yeah do that wow I mean, it's a it's a lot to to sort of wrap your head around. Um, I'm you know I'm also curious is it's sort of the data that you pull is it affected by any of sort of Apple's new policies or Facebook's policies and people saying like oh my God this why do companies need to have all of our data and uh, how is that sort of impacting you and um... so yeah so no we're not affected by that at all because we don't have any cookies on people because. Um, my whole company is built about reaching people with protected characteristics in the EU. So race, religion, sexual orientation, you are not allowed to pull data on individuals. So that's why the context of content is so important to us. That's why everything, all of our targeting is done around the content, not the person reading the content. Right. We, we make assumptions of who the person is that we're going to be reaching by the content that they're consuming. So I don't need to drop a cookie on you and know what you typed in Google yesterday. I just know that this is an article, it's in LGBT media, but it's about technology. Um, so I'm going to assume that you know, you're know you going to have a high affinity to um, Samsung phone. So I'm gonna give you a Samsung phone ad there because, you know, and the Samsung phone ad is gonna be depicting a same-sex couple. Because I know- Interesting. You know, you know, I know two. I know two main things about you. You're interested in technology because you read a little bit of technology out there, and I know that you're either LGBTQ plus or you have a high affinity to LGBTQ plus community because you're in their media reading the technology out there. It is an LGBT publication, so so yeah, that's how we do it. I, th I think it's great in in that sense, sort of the uh, the pro to I guess targeted advertising versus I think there's a lot of concern regarding how specific our Instagram ads are getting and how specific uh, things are getting to the point where it's scary. But uh, you know, uh, I think it's interesting uh, contextual advertising. Yeah, no, definitely, and it was, that's how it was always done. We just lost our way. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah, we literally just started. We started thinking, you know, context was always king, but for some reason we started thinking, well, king, queen, and non-binary. Um, but for some reason we started thinking that uh, the more data layers we could add, the more we knew about you. For some, we thought that that would make you more likely to buy it. Like, and to some degrees it does, but you can do that with context and stop, you know, stop delving so deep into that individual. You know, we already add layers of, of, of targeting. It's just none of it is about you and what you did. We're just interested in what you're doing right there and then, i.e. you are in a gay publication reading about technology. Like that's a perfect consumer for technology. You know, their, their mindset is already, you know, rather than knowing loads of stuff about what you did, but then giving you an ad, I know that you looked at technology yesterday on Google, so I'm going to specifically come for you and give you a technology ad. But at that moment, you know, you're reading um, your Facebook comments under your grand's birthday. You are not interested in that Samsung ad. Why would you be? You're already mind occupied in something else. So I think context is so powerful. We have not unleashed its power yet because we're already, we're already in a mindset that is open to the very topic of what the ad is because it's in context to what I'm already engaged with. Like, I don't know how these very clever people across media and advertising sort of didn't think that that was still had power and let it go. And only now, you know, because Google and Apple have come in and said, well, we're going to cut you off. We're literally going to take away, the chop off the hand that feeds you, find another hand kind of thing then now people have gone, oh, I remember that thing called context now, and let's go and have a look at that again. I don't know. I, did, I wasn't born into this industry, and I mean that by, you know, I wasn't born into any privilege, so people like me didn't get into this industry here. And then 
when I did, I came from military, so uh, sort of thinking very methodically, and I've come from my life that's just had different twists and turns that have made me who I am. And so when I see these problems, they seem so obvious. I, maybe, maybe if I had gone to uni and done all of the Mark Ritson training courses for marketing or something, then maybe I would just be stuck in a thinking like everybody else, but I'm just not there and my team are not there. So something as simple as stick an ad that's contextually relevant to the content they're reading just seems so simple that I don't know. I feel like a fraud sometimes that, well, it can't be that it was this easy. Like it can't be that everybody, but well, I can't think of any other thing they have. It's, it's important to stick to your basics. Uh, you know, really know your your end user. Yeah, exactly. Um, so this has been sort of a wonderful conversation, and to sort of uh, bring it to a close, what is your sort of summary, or your what are the points that you'd like to leave the audience with? Yeah. Um, so I, I made this up a, a couple of months ago, but it's actually really um, terms too. But I think. Seeing as we all love acronyms, I've got a, an acronym of DMTR. Um, so, and I think you can apply it to making your brand better, making your company better, make, ensuring that you really get into diversity, inclusion, equality, um, and making sure that you know your media and advertising stand for something or, or whatever business it is that you're in. I think um, the the D is the do it. So don't wait to get this in order or wait till you've got more black employees or wait till that you've hired an LGBT person. Just do it. Start now, start today, because you know, we're suffering with the inaction today. So, you know, please um, come and help us by, uh, and I mean help as in, a, I'm not saying we all need help. I mean help as in society needs to, have things correct so let's help correct it so do it then i think the second bit is mean it you know you cannot employ authenticity you cannot buy authenticity authenticity does not come from a course you literally the authenticity within dni is to just keep doing what you say you're going to do stick by it make the policy and continue it year on year day on day month on month so do it mean it then train it, train it to the whole rest of the team and then repeat everything I've just said, you know? So train it again, do it again, mean it again and just keep, you know, DMTR, do it, mean it, train it, repeat it. And then I think the world, if everybody does that for the next couple of months, we're, the world will be in a better place. I love it, DMTR it is. Uh, so thank you so much, Chris, for giving us your valuable time and your valuable insights. It's been a great interview, a great conversation, and I know sort of our listeners are going to take away a lot from uh, this in terms of uh, authenticity, context, uh, and just sort of using your experiences to make the world a better place for those who are going to come after us. Cool. Thank you, Pat.